Okay, so let's cover some of the mesh tools that we have here. Combine allows you to take two poly objects that are distinct, and we can see them here in our outliner. Let me delete this cube for a minute from the outliner, P, P sphere one and P sphere two. If I shift and select both of these objects and hit combine, now you see that they're one object that I'm able to move together. Okay, what we do see in our outliner though, is we have these transform nodes and those transform nodes are basically history that allow us to con continue to kind of manipulate or operate these two. Um, distinct from each other, but that the primitive itself, I mean, not the primitive, that the polygon mesh itself now is this new model called PolyMesh 3. Now, this is something that we're going to keep coming back to, but when we have our outliner and our outliner has these kind of transform nodes, uh, a lot of transform nodes in it, it just means that we're retaining a lot of history that once we have a particular operation done, we will want to um, delete that history. Basically, all of that history does is it provides us an opportunity to go back and fine tune it. For example, in our attribute editor, we have now a new node. We have a poly unite node. Um, but this kind of bogs the system down. So we don't necessarily want, we always want to have kind of clean single meshes that are in our outliner here. So once I've kind of done a bunch of operations and I know that I like what I've created, I'm going to say edit, delete all by type history. And now you see those transform nodes are gone. And also that poly unite node is gone. It's just deleted. And that operation has actually been completely applied that, that um, combine. Now, if I have two kind of distinct um, parts of my model that I want to separate from each other, I'm gonna hit separate. And that's kind of the opposite of combine. And now you see I have a transform node here and within it, I have two poly surfaces that are part of this group. So this P sphere three is the group, but then I have two distinct um, poly meshes that are in that group. And now if I go and I hit uh, edit, and you'll see here in the attribute editor, we have a poly separate node. So to get, and once you start to do multiple operations with, with modeling, you'll have like 60 nodes in a row here and to try to click through them, for example, to, to get to your last node, which is your material node, it becomes kind of painful. So you always wanna edit, delete all by type history. And then we just have our main four nodes. You'll also notice that even though these are spheres, right, if I apply a sphere, I have this polysphere one, um, just like I had the polycube one in the previous video, um, which allows me to, to kind of change some of its initial characteristics of the poly primitive. Once I start using some of these modeling tools um, onto these objects, you'll see that that, um, that node is no longer accessible to us. So you really want to set things like your initial subdivisions that you think are necessary um, or the radius or the, you know, any of these characteristics that you want to set to your model as a poly primitive, you do that first and then you can go and model. And then this, this node eventually does disappear once we've started to perform operations like combine or separate or any of the ones that are available here. So that's separate. Now we also, next we have something called smooth. And I think smooth is best, um, uh, best demonstrated using something that's not smooth. So I'm gonna create a cube here and I'm gonna duplicate that cube. And what I'll do for each one of these, I'm gonna go into the attribute editor um, and uh, I see once I've even duplicated it, you see how that polycube node has disappeared. So let me instead just generate a number of polycubes. And within this uh, third node here, let me just add some different divisions to it. So let me add three by three by three. And then in this one, I'll add 10 by 10 by 10. And this is really the resolution of your model is determined based on uh, whether it's low poly or high poly. So this is more of a high poly model than this, even though the, uh, the result uh, looks the same. Um, we have more definition um, with this last uh, cube than we do this first cube based on the amount of subdivisions that are part of it.
So what smooth does is the smooth tool basically rounds out sharp edges um, based on the relative position of the edges around it. Um, so if I go to poly smooth for this first cube here, it's basically going to transform this cube into a sphere or some kind of, um, you know, interpretation of a spherical form. And what it's done is it's added divisions, you can add more divisions to it uh, using this. I'm just uh, left clicking and scrubbing over this, um, then this little window that's popped up. So it allows me to add divisions and, and interpret a level of smoothness. Now, the more, um, the more definition that you have already in your model, this is going to smooth these sharp corners, but kind of maintain some of the relationships that are um, some of the relationships between vertices that don't have uh, a lot of uh, difference in them. Like this particular corner is very sharp, so this will be smooth, whereas this face will kind of maintain, maintain itself. So if I go and hit smooth, right now we see, and even if I add divisions to this, um, you see that it's, even though they're both cubes based on the amount of subdivisions that we start with, uh, will influence the way that that smooth feature runs. And let me go and turn this back to one. I think this is one. So this is with a subdivision of one, one. And then here with, where I'm starting with 10 subdivisions per, per um, axis uh, of this particular object, if I go ahead smooth here, we see we have a much, um, the, the, the cube form maintains itself pretty well, but we're just smoothing these edges. So that's what smooth does. Now, Boolean, which is the next tool here, allows us to combine objects, but in a way that preserves uh, an exterior shell basically between them. So what I mean to say is if I have these two objects and I hit combine, and now let's do it. Let's get an X-ray or wireframe view of this object by hitting four on my keyboard. So when I hit four, our default is five, which is shaded mode. But if I hit the four key, or I can go up to shading here and select wireframe, rather smooth shading all is the default, but go to shading and hit wireframe or hit the hotkey four, you'll see that the interior of this model is uh, that we have maintained this, um, Right, we've maintained that we've maintained the full um, topology. We've maintained that this entire model has been preserved, but it's inside this model. Now, when we're modeling something, uh, what we really like when they're combined in this fashion, where they're not separate, distinct objects, but combined together, but rather where they're intersecting, we don't want these overlapping vertices. We don't want vertices that like that come through a model and then exist within the interior of the model. And this is where Boolean comes in. So let me go back to five here and undo my um, my um, combine here. And so now I just have my two objects. If I uh, con command select these two, P cube one and three, and then hit Boolean. And um, what I want to do is change the Boolean type. And I'm not familiar with this particular way of accessing the tool. So what I'm gonna show you how to operate the Boolean, and you can see here because it has this green bar around it that, um, that this is a new feature. So it has a separate kind of box that comes up. I'm actually gonna show you the Boolean tool here under mesh Booleans. And so with a Boolean, you can do an, a union, a difference and intersection. Let's start with the union bool. So now this looks really similar to the combined, of the, com the using combine on these two objects. But if I hit four and look at the wireframe, you can see that there is um, that, that bottom part of the geometry of this particular object as it intersects the other cube um, has disappeared. And so this is maintained. And we also see it here that what's in red has been kind of deleted. You can kind of see these faint red lines. The Boolean operation has combined these two, but it's also deleted this part of the mesh or these surfaces so that we just have one 
clean singular mesh. Now, after we do an operation, we're going to want to say edit, delete all by type history. And what that will do is that will get rid of this, um, this poly, this Boolean um, um, uh, node here in our attribute editor. But there's another kind of Boolean we can do. And that would be a um, Boolean a difference bool. And what the difference Boolean does rather than the union bool is it combines these two objects, but it takes the second object you've selected and cutting it and cuts it out of the first object you've selected. Another type of bool we can do would be the opposite. So this would be a difference between B and A, right? So it takes, it cuts out from the first, ob from the second object you've selected the first object. Okay, or we can do what's called a, an intersection bool. And that just maintains the intersection of these two. And then I go and say, delete all by type history. And now I've maintained, now this is my new surface. 